Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to discuss about the best WordPress hosting companies out there in 2020. Which are the good ones, the bad ones and the ugly. I know there are a lot of videos and articles already on this topic, but I'm tired of seeing them promoting just the affiliate products everywhere. Bluehost is the best host. Really? Let's take a look. Okay, so this video is in three sections, one for beginners, the second for growing websites and the third for high traffic websites. So you can choose whichever is a relevant category for you. Also, if you think I'm talking slowly, please speed up the video by changing the speed in options below. I might sound like Mickey Mouse, but that's okay. So guys, I want to make this video as honest as possible. So please keep in mind that whatever I'm saying is from my experience and I'm not endorsing any one company here. In the last 15 years, I've jumped around a lot and moved hosts like more than a couple of times actually. So everything from HostGator to GoDaddy and Kinsta, I've tried it all. Trust me, I'm never satisfied with what I get, no matter what they promise. So today I have a fair good understanding of which is a good host and which is not and most importantly how to choose a host for yourself and that's what I'm hoping to share with you today. Okay so you know back in those days the choices were simple right you had just three choices basically cheap shared hosting a bit expensive VPS and dedicated hosting. I remember when I started blogging I could only afford a super cheap shared hosting and I so wanted to be on a dedicated hosting like the big guys but only popular websites that made a lot of money could afford dedicated hosting. I can afford it today 15 years later though but then look at the options today there's almost 25 different WordPress hosting services to choose from. That's a lot. So and I'm not even going to mention the obviously cheap and bad hosts here but just stick to the best of the best. So if you're a beginner you don't have to compromise on the quality of hosting though. Today you have so many options that even at less than five dollars or six dollars you can get a good solid host for your blog. And two companies I recommend for those who are starting out with blogging are SiteGround and Hostinger. They are super cheap and gives you better tech than GoDaddy or HostGator. So let's look at SiteGround first. If your budget is under $10 per month and you need a headache free solid host that can run your blog without bothering about technical stuff then SiteGround is a good choice. They have been around for a while and know their game. Their technology is top notch as in when compared to premium hosts but it's good enough to get you started and perhaps keep you with them as long as you grow. Their smallest plan lets you run one website with 10,000 visits maximum and all the bells and whistles to speed up your website is included all in $7 and this is including the special offer and discount. If you need the discount coupon hit me up on Instagram or email and I'll send you the coupon. So for a beginner I think this is a great deal. Now note that there is a limit of one website and 10,000 visits per month. It should be enough for you to get started but if you gradually grow your traffic more than 10,000 you can always upgrade to the next level plan at $10 per month and have unlimited websites with 25,000 visits monthly. Even that is a good plan to be on. And what I really like about SiteGround is that over the years they've optimized their game and know what works and what doesn't. Their plans are well thought out and favors beginners. They don't have any hidden fees or restrictions or any frills that you don't actually need. It's pretty straightforward and you get a good deal for your money. To add to it, their customer support is very good and can help with free migration and other initial setup glitches if at all. I very much recommend SiteGround for beginners and young bloggers. My second WordPress host recommendation for beginners and young bloggers who are cost conscious and want something reliable to get started with until they get serious about generating revenue from their blogs is Hostinger. Hostinger is a new entry into the hosting space. In fact, it was called Hosting Media but since it hit 1 million subscribers, it rebranded to Hostinger and ever since then they have been pretty aggressive with their marketing. You'll see them all over social media today. So since it's a new entry, we don't have all the information we need like long term experience etc. But unlike SiteGround, Hostinger is killing it in one area and that is price. I mean we've seen many WordPress hosts that are cheap but almost all of them compromise on the tech. I can say with confidence that Hostinger is one host that is both cheap and has a good tech to support it. When I say tech, I mean the technical specifications like server performance, bandwidth, response times, etc. In fact, in one of the studies where server response times and page load times were compared, 
Hostinger surprisingly came in in the top performers, beating even some of the expensive hosts. And they are unique in the sense that they are the only WordPress host in the economy category that has Lightspeed Cache optimized service. Lightspeed Cache is a technology that makes websites load faster. And as you know, Google recommends that you make your websites load faster for better user experience. Hostinger provides Lightspeed Cache on all their plans pre-installed. I think that's a great plus. Their customer support also is good. I mean, we only have so many years of data, but from what I know, they have a decent service going on. Hostinger's pricing is super competitive and starts at $1 per month, and this is including the discount offer. So if you need it, hit me up on Instagram or email and I'll share it with you. If you can get a Lightspeed optimized server for $1 per month, it can't get cheaper than that. So Hostinger is my recommendation for anyone new to blogging and is looking for a reliable and cheap host. So let's move to the next section. Best WordPress host for beginners and websites that are growing in traffic. So when you go beyond that 25K visits per month, you will notice problems showing up. Your host will charge you more for overage charges, website taking too long to respond, page load time going for a toss, and bandwidth limit exceeded, and these kind of errors. That's when you need more resources for your website, more bandwidth, more traffic, more storage space, etc. Or you might be like me, like I have this bad habit of starting off multiple site projects based on shower thoughts. You know, you're in the shower and you get this idea and what do you do? You grab a domain and install a WordPress blog and get started with it until another idea shows up and you move on with it. So over a period of time, I've been doing this, starting projects, killing them off for a while and the cycle goes on. What I ended up with is more than a dozen unfinished projects and a bloated server space. And that's when I moved to a cloud server. With cloud servers, it's so much more easier to deal with multiple projects and websites with occasional high traffic. Cloud servers are so elastic that they can contain a bunch of small sites as well as high traffic websites alike. And my cloud server of choice is Cloudways. The one reason I like Cloudways is that everything can be customized according to your choice. You can choose your data server of your choice. It could be Google Cloud, Amazon Web Servers, Vulture, Linode, or even DigitalOcean servers. If you were to set up WordPress installations on your own on these servers, it would be a bit of a work. So Cloudways actually makes it easy. You just have to choose your data center, your server location, your choice of server space, and you're pretty much done. You can keep adding as many WordPress installs as you want, and you should be good to go at any time. I currently have around 20 websites on my Cloudways server, and it runs perfectly. Not all of them are high traffic websites though. Most are low traffic and some are medium traffic, but they're all getting amazing server response time and page load times, also up times. So if you want to start with DigitalOcean servers, you can get started with as low as $10 per month. And if you choose Google Cloud, you can be all set at around $30 to $35 per month. And that's pretty much it. So if your website is on another host, bringing them to Cloudways is super easy with their Migrator plugin. They also have custom caching options with their own plugin, etc. And the whole setup is a plug and play. No hassles whatsoever. I've had some small issues once a while though, like once when one of my websites got hit by a DDoS attack, the site wouldn't load and threw a database connection error. I quickly contacted their live chat support and they fixed it in minutes. I've noticed that their customer support folks are also so knowledgeable and recommends the right thing always. I would highly recommend you Cloudways if you're a growing blogger with multiple projects or even an agency with multiple clients and want the same seamless standard experience for all your websites. If you have a high traffic website, you can either upgrade to their higher plans, not the $30 plan, but the higher plan, and also try a managed WordPress host, which is our next category. The best WordPress host for high traffic websites. So by high traffic websites, I mean anything from 50K upwards. Once you get to this level of traffic, your website needs more attention and some dedicated resources, like faster page load times, faster memory, and stuff like that. Most of my high traffic websites suffered from slow page load times before I moved to a managed hosting. The problem is you wouldn't really know that your website has an issue, especially slow page load times. But once you start measuring it with tools like Pingdom or Google PageSpeed Insights, you will know that even though your website is loading, it is slow compared to other websites. And this is when you realize that you are losing out on traffic. So Google has hinted that it recommends websites to load fast and offer a better experience for users. Page load time may not be affecting Google ranks directly, but it sure affects user experience and the faster your website loads, the better it is. So my preferred choice for hosting for high traffic websites are two, Kinsta 
and WP Engine. Two of my high traffic websites are with Kinsta and I'm super happy with them. They aren't cheap. At one point I was paying around $200 plus every month on Kinsta but it was totally worth it. Their technology stack is top notch and is optimized for high traffic volumes. One would think that getting started on the settings on a managed WordPress host is tough and sophisticated but that's not true at least in Kinsta's case. Kinsta in my experience have been pretty much a plug and play experience. Migration to Kinsta is free so they would do it for you and once you're on there the difference is so evident. You know when you're on sites like SiteGround and even Cloudways it's like driving a powerful sedan or something but on Kinsta it's like driving a Tesla. Everything about them is top notch like be it their content on their website or their backend UX or their customer support it's just too good that you can't resist it. Talking about customer support I got to say this about Kinsta. You know how typical hosting companies do customer support right? You ask a question and you get a template like answer. Do they solve your problem? Yes but is that all? Probably not. With Kinsta, my experience have always been nothing less than exceptional. And I'm not saying this because I've been with them for long. Every time I have an issue, which is very rare, they not only solve my problem, but they go above and beyond to tell me what's going on, what might happen, what should I do to prevent this, and sometimes even why I should be doing what I'm doing. I mean, they don't have to do this, but they do. So I feel like they're very honest and know their stuff. Like they aren't trying to sell you anything that you don't want or trying to trick you into upselling something. They're actually a very relatable bunch of folks who are passionate about what they're doing. And that always comes across and I value it. The problem, so to speak, with Kinsta is that they are expensive and unless you can see the value, it might seem like a little too much especially when you compare with cheaper options, which we will discuss in the next segment. So if you're budget conscious, I wouldn't recommend Kinsta for you. Or if you're one of those types where you hate everything pre-built and packaged for you, instead you would love to build your own stuff, then Kinsta may not be for you. I almost forgot about WP Engine, which is the second recommendation I have for high traffic websites. Everybody knows WP Engine. I think they kind of championed this whole segment of WordPress optimized servers in the market. They have top notch tech, great customer support and a very popular ecosystem. Just everything you need from a reliable web host. But I find them a little bit too aggressive and you know, salesy. You know what I mean. Also, I personally don't like WP Engine because of a bad experience I had with them years back. I was on one of their popular plans, I guess the $100 plan, but I got hit with overage charges once, twice and thrice. Overage charges are basically extra payment you have to make for every additional visitor that comes to your website beyond the allowed limits. Like on the $100 plan, the allowed number of visitors are 100,000. Fair enough. But things turn ugly if you get more traffic. So back in 2011 or 12, I believe Alyssa Milano shared one of my articles on Twitter and that basically crashed my server. And I got charged for every visitor beyond that 100,000 limit. So even though my plan was at $100, I ended up paying $900 plus for all that additional traffic. So it could have happened with Kinsta as well as they too have additional overage charges but that one experience with WP Engine kind of made me rethink my decision and I moved to Cloudways actually. So in my opinion WP Engine is a great option if you have a high traffic website but be mindful of their additional charges and limits. I'm sure they must have optimized their pricing plans ever since but that bad taste still lingers in my mouth. But if you're a blogger with a high traffic website then my recommendation would be to go with either WP Engine or Kinsta. I do have some offers linked up via my affiliate links in the description so do grab them if you want to try it. Okay so let's move on to our bonus section that I promised. Let me share with you some of the lesser known but mention worthy WordPress hosts that you might want to try. Some of these are impressive and even better than some of the mainstream and popular hosts like the ones I mentioned earlier in this video. Now first such company is called Closestay. C-L-O-S-T-E. It's a Europe based company I believe and it's doing some interesting and competing things in this space. I was recommended Closestay by Jijo Vergis from WP Speed Matters and I tried Closestay by moving one of my websites from Kinsta just because I had that itch to try something non-mainstream. You know, kind of like the underdog. So they don't have the frills or charm like Kinsta or WP Engine but the technology stack is super impressive and even better in some cases than Kinsta. One issue so to speak I have with Kinsta is that even when they boast of cutting edge technology on their servers, 
they don't have light speed caching available on their servers. The argument is that you don't need it because Kinsta makes sure that everything else is taken care of in your tech stack, that you don't need a new technology just because it's new. However, if you're someone who wants to chase the new thing and wants to try out new things, then you might as well ask, why not try light speed as well? So Closeday has Lightspeed caching available on all their servers, which is nice. Not only that, their pricing is on a pay-as-you-go basis, which makes it even super competitive. So you can get the same or better tech than WP Engine or Kinsta on Closeday with like one fourth of the price. The downside is that they don't have great customer support. No live chat, everything is on email, and you don't really know or identify them as much as you would like to. Heck, I don't even know who runs Closeday. They're very rarely on social media and there's no face to see. Whereas Skinsta or WP Engine like companies are all over the place and very accessible. So that might be an issue for some of you. Another interesting and lesser known WordPress host is 10web. Now I haven't tried them in the past but I've heard great feedback about them from those who did. Their features are pretty interesting. To start off, they claim that every website that is hosted on 10web gets a 95 plus score on Google Page Speed Test. Wow, that's a tall claim. I want to try it and see if they tell me Ah, well, it's actually dependent on the website theme and the plugins you use. We meant that for a simple thing. I hope they don't say that. They have real-time backups, which is great. Free SSL, Elementor Website Builder, 50 plus premium WordPress plugins, free SEO plugins and scanners, free premium WordPress themes, eight data center locations, staging site, premium DNS, free migration, image optimization service, and runs on Google Cloud. That's a whole lot, isn't it? But they're not super cheap either and come loaded with features. If you don't want to take the pain in optimizing your website or page speed and want a ready-made solution, then you might want to consider it. Now, before I wrap up, I also got to mention a few things. One, why not include Bluehost and Dreamhost in the list, right? I know some of you guys are ready to comment on this. Well, you might have seen that in many articles and videos published discussing about WordPress hosts, Bluehost tops the charts. Well, not in all cases, but most cases. And there are two reasons to it. One is their generous affiliate program. I'll be honest with you. Because most bloggers promote Bluehost because they have a good affiliate program. And Bluehost and Dreamhost both are among the three recommended hosting companies by WordPress. But I personally have found that Bluehost is kind of a mass appeal product in my opinion. In the sense that they have nothing customized, it's not speed optimized and offers really bad customer support. It's been there for a while and it's been a good run. Today, the landscape has changed and they aren't worthy enough to be recommended and this is my personal opinion. Nothing wrong though, they still have a decent service, it's easy to get started etc. But I think it's high time WordPress looked into their official recommendations and switched to a better quality host or host. Now which hosting should you avoid? So I would not consider choosing Bluehost, GoDaddy, Dreamhost or HostGator if you're serious about growth and need a fast WordPress site. They might be cheap price wise but definitely not reliable. Let me know in comments if you're on Bluehost and what your experience has been. Who knows maybe I'm wrong. So that's pretty much it guys, five of the best WordPress hosts that I think are of great value in today's market. I know there are around 25 old WordPress hosts available today and it won't be fair to include all of them. Instead, what I wanted to do was do an honest review from my experience and I'm sure that there are good companies out there trying new things in this space and they deserve a mention here. So I'll be checking them even after publishing this video and will be adding them in the description below. So make sure you check it out. I list down my personal favorites down as well so you can grab some of the offers and discounts in case you decide to buy them. Some of them are affiliate links, some of them are not. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. This is Mani Karthik, signing off.